Hi, hi everyone. Welcome back. I think these are the people here that have eaten their lunch and decided that this event is worth coming and not hanging around outside having a cigarette, right? So happy to see you guys here. Uh, my name is Benny Kasuma. So today, uh, we're going to look at a couple of things. I know this whole morning, you all are looking at uh, a lot of uh, interesting panel discussion. What we're going to be doing next 15 minutes or so is to dive a little bit deeper into the uh, entity side of things about not really on the operation side, but really on your suppliers, right? That's what we're going to do. Um, and of course, we have DEX, right? I know after a lot of panel discussion, you may... You may yearn for some good old fashioned PowerPoints. That's what we've always been told. Right. So it's a bit of a mouthful, right? If you look at it, uh, build resilience in your business model with uh, data driven supply risk management. And I think this is something that is extremely fundamental. We have worked a lot with uh, large clients globally on this space. We explore a few things, right? We explore data, we explore analytics, uh, we'll explore interconnectedness of risk, and also things along the supply chain resiliency. So these are a couple of themes that we will explore today. Oops. First. Okay. First, let me introduce the company that I work for. The company is called Moody's. I think some of you, or in fact, a lot of people will think Moody's as a rating agency. And it, indeed it is. But that rating agency um, belongs to what we call the Moody's Investors Service. So there's the one that gives you you know, your, your, your double AA1 for your sovereign race, for your bonds and all that. So that is uh, Moody's Investor Service. Where I'm from is actually what we call the Moody's Analytics. And this is the company or the entity that provides things on data, on uh, insights, on analytics that can help you make better and faster decisions. So we explore that thing. This, I think, is a good... Uh, explanation of what Moody's Analytics is doing, right? So like I said, we provide data on company and insights on company. And the things that we are looking at, essentially a few things. One of the common themes we see is master data. We do that a lot. Uh, of course, financial risk and credit risk, that is almost the bread and butter of Moody's, right? We are well known for the last 100 years to be the forefront of essentially uh, credit risk, okay? Now, we're going to dive a bit deeper in supplier risk side of things, supply chain, but also bear in mind that depending where you work, depending on your operations, if you have operations in Europe or US, there's a lot of regulatory requirements or regulatory risk that you need to, 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 be, to be mindful of. And we'll, we'll go a little bit on that. Then, of course, there's an ESG, which is all the emerging risks. All right. So these are some of the things that we, we will look at. So Moody's, as a whole, we do a lot of stuff right on credit, on supply chain, on macroeconomics, right, uh, on, on data management. So this is a little bit busy, right? It seems there's a lot of things on the screen, but I'll explain, right? Because traditionally, when we, when we analyze risk, we are looking at things often in, in silo, okay? You could obviously rely on uh, some of the more traditional financial risk metrics, right? Uh, macroeconomic view. These are some of the things that we look at. But we also have to factor in emerging risk. So what's emerging risk? So ESG, everybody talking about ESG. How do you integrate ESG into your business as usual? right? How does it impact your uh, analysis of companies? Then you also talk about climate, right? supply chain. So these are what we call the emerging risk of things. All right? What's important to note is quite often when we do risk assessment, we are looking at things in silo. So you look at uh, financial risk of the company, uh, you might look at regulatory risk, but you're not really combining them. Or you could be combining them in a very uh, uh, simplistic manner, right? Just, just putting some weight on financial health, putting some weight on perhaps re regulatory risk, and you come up with a, with a final score. What we are doing here at Moody's is, is, is quite complex. It's already it's quite different, right? The approach is we know that risk has interdependency with each other. So some risks will amplify each other, some risks will mitigate, and, and some could be diminished by each other. So what's important to note is that risk on its own has value, but to understand the interconnectedness of the risk, that I think is, is really something that is uh, quite unique. Okay. So here we have an ability to essentially take all these different risks here, 
right, and apply what we call the systemic and idiosyncratic shocks to the different scenario. And, and, and from that, you are able to, to develop what we call a, like a financial health score, which is not a basic cumulative, but essentially talking about integrating different risks and how they, they are dependent on each other. Okay, so the next slide probably gives you a better idea on the outcome of this. So if you look at this integrated risk assessment in action, right? So on the top part of it, you will see that um, you will see that there's a yellow line which, which shows a financial health score, and, and that denotes how the score or how the financial health of the company has evolved over the years. Right? We are talking about in this case a 15 years horizon. Um, right, a 15 years horizon. What I think is good to help you understand a bit better is if you look at this few risks that we talk about, right, the ESG, um, the uh, cyber and all that, you can see on the bottom graph what constitute the risk to your counterparty. So here we are talking about entity level, right? You have a supplier A located in India or located in wherever in the US, right? So you see that in the first year, the, the largest contribution of risk to your supplier is essentially credit risk, right? Denoted by... Uh, denoted by this part here, okay? And then you can also see that supply chain in purple is also there. It's also making a big impact. Macro, we can't do much, right? If there's an increase in interest rate and all that, well, it is what it is, right? So, but there are things that you know that you probably will change. So over the years, in year two, supply chain is still there, but in year three, we expect the supply chain rates to be uh, significantly reduced. And over the years, right, climate risk become more material. So what we are trying to tell you is this. If you look at a portfolio of suppliers, you need to know how you engage them in the short term, in the medium term, and in the longer term. So in this particular case of your supplier or your counterparty, you know that supply chain will be there, but that will get reduced. Okay? And over the years, you know, in fact, from the year seven or eight onwards, climate risk is going to be there. So it depends on the company. It depends on the industry where the company is and depends on the location. So there are a lot of factors at play in which we put everything together to what we call an integrated risk assessment. Okay. So now we look at integrated risk assessment. What we're going to be looking at next is a bit of a diving into a specific risk, right? And so in the case of Moody's, we, we, we work on a few things, right? We have we have what we call the entity data side of things. So entity data is essentially information about your counterparties, your partners, your suppliers, right? Uh, fundamentally, financial health assessment is probably a key indicator whether your supplier is going to do well, right? So if, if, if let's say your supplier is going to, uh, to be uh, uh, financially weak, it could be an impact on, on, your, on your delivery, uh, on your performance, on innovation and and all that. Then regulatory risk is something that we do a lot, screening for sanctions, PEPs, uh, anti-bribery and corruption and things like that. We'll, we'll go a little bit more into the ESG side of things and the supplier risk. Okay. So on the entity data, it's, it's essentially you have, you have to look at what kind of information we have on your suppliers. And this is something that we have done uh, very well. We have 400 over million companies right, globally. So this, if you can see, this is, uh, okay, it's a bit hard. There's actually supposed to be a, a map behind it, right? But you can see that North America, which is uh, one of the largest, I think it's probably the largest trading partner of India. Um, we have 70 over million companies. China is another large trading company. Same as Russia. I think it's grown a lot, right? So we have data on this. Okay. The next one, I'll just dive a bit on the ESG and fiscal risk. Okay. Maybe we need a... Slightly better uh, connector here. Okay, one of the issues that we, it, when we talk about ESG risk uh, to be part of the business as usual is you know, a few things, right? Um, quite often is the lack of data, right? And this is the point that I'm going to dive on is lack of data. You have your regulation, you have your complex value change, but for now, it's really the data. What do you know about your um, suppliers or rather the ESG profile of your suppliers? On this note, Moody's has actually come out uh, with a lot of ESG metrics. So we have what we call ESG score for every company, an environmental, a social, a governance, and overall ESG score. 
And this is, this is where um, you are able to use scores like this um, to, in order to, to understand uh, the lay of land, a heat map of your suppliers and to know which one you need to engage a little bit more closely. Right? So this is something that uh, we have done a lot. Can't really see, but not so clear. But, but here, effect effectively, it's, it's really a scoring that we put. Right? And of course, many of your suppliers could be SME. And that's where we have what we call a modeling predicted score in order to give you the, the data that you need, right? Because it's not possible to provide assessment on every single company. That's where the predicted score will be very useful. I add on physical risk because I think uh, the next slide, I'll show you how you can combine all of this together. So the idea is that your supplier could be located in, for example, in New York City, where there's not much physical stress. But their factory could be located in Florida, where you could be subjected to hurricanes, right? So when we have a physical risk assessment, which is one of the Moody's uh, uh, scoring mechanism, is that you are then able to map essentially your uh, company, not just from an entity corporate level, but also on an entity or asset or facility level, right? So this is something that we can do. So this is an example of something that we plot for a region. And likewise, we can plot the same thing for facilities. Okay? So this is, and, and we'll, we'll see how we can combine and layer the different things together. Okay. So this is the last topic that uh, I'm going to share with you all, which is on the supply chain resiliency. So what we are trying to do is to put in all the different things, right? Uh, trade disruption, disease, you know, uh, geopolitical stuff. And what we are doing is we are not just combining entity data, but we are also combining with things like uh, uh, geospatial data, real-time information, vessel shipping information to layer essentially the different mechanism, right? The different insights that you can get that you otherwise would not be able to do just by looking at things independently. So here... Um, Again, maybe the screen is not so clear, but what you can do is we can plot your entire supply chain, right, with the facilities that they are in, okay, on a map. And what we do then is we can layer events, locations, suppliers, and even products, depending what sort of data we have, in one single view, right? And events can be an adverse event. So events could be a hurricane, events could be a strike right, or, or, or anything, right, or the ship got stuck in a Suez Canal. So that could be event. So we are basically layering different things on a map, combining with entity information, so you have a good, clear understanding of your whole entire supply chain side of things. And the next slide um, is really the impact. So this is one example of what we have done for a customer, right? The customer has operations in the Florida area in the U.S., and we know that Florida, there's always hurricanes. And so they are trying to map the potential impact to their suppliers or the factories that are located there from uh, Hurricane Ida, right? So this is one of the things that we can do. And again, the whole idea is to be, uh, to have different layers of information so you have better understanding of your risk. Scoring mechanism, can't tell, but Essentially, we link product, uh, we link company to factory to products, right? That is exactly, um, but not so clear here. So, a few key things. I think I mentioned a lot of things today, but perhaps just a few key things that if you want to know. I think the first one is that, you know, if you want to build resiliency, you need data. And with data, you need analytics and you need insights, okay? Now, we, we, we've seen a little bit of the type of risk, the risk quantification whether it's financial risk, whether, whether it's ESG or reputational risk. So these are some of the key things. And then finally, in order to be really making better decisions over time, you need to look at integrated risk assessment and essentially interconnectedness of risk and not just looking at things independently. All right. Okay. So that's it from me today. I hope I've given you some insights about some of the capabilities of Moody's, some of the areas that we work with. Um, my colleagues are here, happy to chat with you guys after that if you have any questions. All right, thank you.